and we're live, bitch. What another another crazy week in fantasy football. Um, yeah, watched all of Red Zone, watched the game, every all the highlights, and yeah, another crazy week, bitch, wasn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm still catching up myself. Obviously, I, I uh, had a game Sunday night, so missed those six o'clock games. But uh, yeah, some uh, some very interesting fantasy scores, both um, you know, racking 30, 40 points, and then. Uh, some studs delivering uh, very little as well. So yeah, both ways. Some crazy results, you know. Some some seventy points to twenty. Miami, what a what a scoreline that is. So, and uh, just looking at our league, some very close finishes as well. A lot of blowouts, but you know the me versus tag is uh, very tight at the minute going into Monday night. So yeah, looking uh, looking forward to to the week finishing. Two two games tonight to go. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll load that up actually, Bish. Now you mention it, we'll load the league up. It's a it's a tight one. I think m the main close ones are uh, my matchup versus Stocky. Um, I'm predicted to win, but by only five points. And uh, if I look closely here, they, he's got T Higgins, which makes me nervous against the young Rams uh, cornerbacks. They've stood up well so far, but. Uh, I've only got Devonta Smith. Uh, well, only Devonta Smith's been brilliant this year, but against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who have who have been pretty good this year, Bish. So, what you what you thinking for me? Yeah, it's uh, it's all down to that that man Joe Burrow, isn't it? I think is he available? Is he not available? That has a, a big bearing on what happens tonight, I believe. So, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be interesting. Devonta Smith, um, you know, that that is a is a a Tampa Bay side in with who have been pretty well defensively stout the last uh, couple of weeks so that's a, that's an interesting one as well so yeah i guess um we'll know at 1 15 a.m uh, <laughs> uk time monday uh, to see if uh, joe burrow's under center for that first snap yeah that's um and what are the reports saying i think are the reports saying he, he he's playing because i know the coach wants him to play but i think yeah that the, the, I think there's a bit of everything at the minute. There's, um, I even heard a rumor today that they're thinking of putting him on IR for four weeks. So, you know, it's, um, I think everything's up in the air. As I said, it's, it's one of those where I don't think it's, it's going to be a long, ongoing thing. I think if he does play, but as we said, they've started zero and two. They need some wins. So, can they afford to rest him? I don't know. Um, I guess it's, a, it's a big risk to take. It is, yeah, especially like you said, in them play their, their goals to be deep in the playoffs and with Owen too. I don't think they can afford to rest him. The ideal, if they went one for one, or even you know what I mean, if they went one for one, two two for zero, then you, you probably would rest him, knowing you're gonna make the playoffs. And then from there, but without him, uh, without him being <laughs> without without bad the starts been, I don't know. But I'm, I'm nervous for the uh, I'm nervous for the Bengals this week. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah, it's just a, a tricky situation. Obviously, you don't want it to be any worse, but it's uh, it's desperate times, isn't it? Not and two and against two division rivals as well in uh, Cleveland and Baltimore. So, you know, <laughs> they started slow last year, and and you know, and they, they finished strong. And you know, to be fair, we sort of expect the same this year. You know, we we know they're going to be there or thereabouts, or they have the talent to be there or thereabouts. It's just. Does it's just a niggling injury that without yeah. a long period of rest doesn't really improve. So it's just whether he can manage it, I guess. And um, you know, Aaron Donald is running after you, and you you're on one leg. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a scary thought. <laughs> it is, uh, but Bish, I think that as you said, you're in the close one. There is there is naught point one one point. I think I've said that right. No point one one yeah. point between you and Tags prediction. So take us through it. It is really close. Um, as I said, I got I got off the field on Sunday. Had a look at me my fantasy team, and I was massively disappointed with with Lawrence and Ridley. I thought that would uh, would reap some more points for me there. But so that's that's let me down. But yeah, it's um, tonight. It's down to the wide receivers. I've got Godwin and Puka Nakua, and. Um, Coming up against uh, Tag, who's got Kyron Williams, so it's Tag's currently got a, what? He's got a ten-point lead. I think I'd rather be Tag with a ten-point lead at the minute. So yeah. I'm hoping my wide receivers can pull me through. But you know, it's a it's a very tight tight finish at the top. Someone zero has got to go. <laughs> I like that bit, but 
with how good Paka Nakura is, only being predicted 12.8 points after his week so far. I'll just load him up after yeah. his week so far. I think you could be in you could be in good stead here, Bish. Week one, 16.9. Week two, 22.6. Um, I'm like I'm. My money's on you, Abish. Yeah. Well, to be fair, I'd, I'd argue the same with Kyron Williams. You know, he's been over 15 points the first two weeks. I think his his predictions come up. It's it's up at, up around 12 points. But you know, he's he's hammered that the last two weeks. So, yeah, I'm. Uh, it's going to be a good. It's going to be a good matchup. You know, the Rams. Let's hope they're throwing it to Puka and not running it or throwing it to Kyron. So <laughs> that's the goal. Um, and then we've got Godwin in there, who I'm hoping will just be a, a target monster and get me some good targets and maybe, you know, 70, 80 uh, receiving yards. So, yeah, um, it'll be an interesting uh, read tomorrow morning. It will be. Yeah, just a quick look at Chris Godwin's uh, season so far. And yet, oh, is that, he's not had the best of starts. I think my Kevin, I can show off because I think, well, no, I can't because he's not in this league. In my yeah. other league, um, Mike Evans is in my team, so um, I'm, I've been I've been very happy so far. But it, it's like you said, Chris Godwin's talent. You've got to think, you've got to think. Uh, Chris has uh, got to have his game. Normally, they go to for throw, don't they? In previous years, there's normally one good week for one, one good week for the other, and uh, it could be Chris. Yeah. Godwin. You'd hope so, anyway, Bish. I think with uh, with how high of a dra- well, he wasn't that high draft cap. Or was he? I think he would. No, but I think it's got Mike Evans is obviously your deep threat and your touchdown guy. But it, I'm hoping um, Darius Slay sticks with him. You know, the, the Eagles secondaries uh, they've lost a few pieces since last year, so that might leave a bit of space for Godwin just to, around the middle of the field just to clean up a little bit. So I'm hoping Baker sees that pass rush coming and is just looking for a nice, easy target in Godwin to, you know, just uh, slowly but surely just creep up with a with the half PPR points. Right, Bish, we're, we're into our uh, regular regular segments that we now do. We'll start off with the injury report. I don't think there's as many this week, is there, Bish? There's not as many injuries, luckily. But there's one major one, and I've stolen from you. As we were going through it, I stole the big one. It's Mike Williams. Uh, all the reports so far, I don't think it's been fully confirmed yet, but the reports are that he's done his ACL and he will be out uh, for the rest of the season. Um, with how good his fantasy season was going, I'm, I'm sad for him. He had a brilliant game. Uh, it was it was middle of the fourth, late middle, late to the fourth, fourth quarter there, and they, they looked awesome. The Chargers obviously probably need him. They've not had the best of starts of the season, but they won the game at the weekend, and I think this is a massive loss. Um, how does this how does this relate in fantasy terms? Obviously, Mike William owners will probably be looking who is next, who will be coming up in the waiver reports. So we'll, we'll save a name for the waiver report. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, it's sad. I'd, I'd probably probably put Keenan Keenan Allen even higher. If you're looking for a trade if you're trying to be shifty and getting into a trade to someone who uh, may not know the value of an injury like this, may not know Keenan Allen's targets might even get even larger after the amazing season he's been having so far. But yeah. Uh, if you're a Keenan Allen fan, you never you want to don't want to say any good news is <laughs> any injuries are good news, but I'd say this might be good news because it means you're guaranteed a lot of targets, and uh, yeah, and there's a man in uh, the waiver wire who uh, will be coming up who I would be uh, who I'm very excited. I've already wavered him myself. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I wonder what price you're going at with him. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's a big one, like you said. It's a shame, really, because it seems to be the Chargers, especially last year. Just having the wide receivers, their op- their options healthy at the same time is is um, sort of hindered them really. And you know, Mike Williams is that big home run threat, and he, he was having a great game. I think 120 yards, a touchdown, uh, touchdown actually from Keenan Allen. <laughs> so that's an interesting <laughs> one. But yeah, so it's yeah, it is, it is a big blow for them. Obviously, you know, Herbert's um, known for his for his gunslinging. Really, he's, he's got that in him. And uh, that that's one weapon, obviously that he'll be without for the rest of the year by uh, by all reports, accordingly. So yeah, yeah that, that's a big one for him. And for, for mine, I've not really, as you said, there's not been much. I, I had a quick look around, and I was actually watching the late game, the Chiefs. Um, I think they were thirty-one nil up against the Bears, and 
just that Mahomes right ankle again. You know, he's in the pocket and I think someone swings round and he just rolls his ankle a little bit. So it didn't look too much, to be honest. You know, as as I said, they were they were well in the lead, thirty one nil up. He came out not soon after that, and um, the backup came in. So we'll see how see how that one goes. Again, it's those ankles. You know, if, if it's a low low ankle sprain, it, you know he might be all right. You know, we know what he did last year. He powered through late on in the season with an ankle injury. So you know, picking another one up so early in the season to a mobile quarterback. Um, it's not ideal, so we'll, we'll just have to see how that one goes. Yeah, um, in terms of, like you said, in terms of your fantasy outlook, I don't think it really changes too much for the Chiefs, to be honest. The wide receiver court, is that is that wide and varied, that many people get targets. I don't think many people are starting many Chiefs wide receivers other than, uh, other than your flex gamble anyway. Does it affect Travis Kelsey a little bit? Maybe, but I think Travis is that good. If, if there is a backup quarterback or if Mahomes is struggling, he's looking for one man and he's looking for Travis Kelsey. He probably won't take as many risks uh, going to some of his others. He'll go for his safe bet and play it safe. And uh, yeah, I don't think it really has. It might, it might affect the uh, running back situation. Pacheco, uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire being more of the running down uh, back, uh, sorry, the rushing. Uh, oh, I've said it wrong again. The receiving, the receiving yeah. there at uh, Kansas City. So it, it might you might have a flex option in Clyde edwards alaire or be even more confident in Isaiah Pacheco. Bish. I'm going to throw up another name there as well. I think it really helps Jarek McKinnon. So he, he's naturally the the receiving back. I think he's he definitely got one touchdown. He might have got two touchdowns, um, but I think it, it brings him up. As I said, if that movement's um, not right with Mahomes. He's just got that little safety valve in uh, McKinnon who he can give it to. And, and he's, a, he's a shifty player who can make stuff happen after the catch. So I think it brings him into play a little bit there. So, you know, if if he's out there, maybe uh, I, I'm in the wrong segment here, but that's that's another name to look out for. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I named every other running back, but the... Uh... <laughs> they've, they've got a few. <laughs> yeah, that was a shocker, but no... Thanks for saving me there, Bish. Yeah, Jarek McKinnon, get it on the waiver wire. I don't know if he's mentioned in our waiver wire segment, but perfect time to get him in now because he'll definitely be one if uh, Mahomes' calf injury keeps uh, happening. Uh, but that brings us into the next one, Bish, our fantasy flops of the week. Uh, and I think there were quite a few. <laughs> there were some There were some brilliant games and some brilliant performances, but also a few massive flops. If you don't mind, I'm going to start off with mine. Derek Henry, he's in my fantasy team. What a disappointment he's been. He actually got out-snapped uh, for people who are probably still learning uh, NFL terms. out snap means he was stood there as the ball is snapped at being the running back. He actually got out-snapped by uh, Ty, Ty J Spears. Am I pronouncing that right, Bish? I think so. I think so. <laughs> Ty J Spears in the... Uh, yeah, that's that's crazy. A player of Derrick Henry's calibre or what we perceived is his calibre for this year. It, it's a shocking and nervous indictment. And yeah, only two fantasy points on twenty rushing yards. It's uh, it's not looking good for Derrick Henry owners. Uh, Derrick Henry owners, and I'm I'm one of them, and I'm very nervous. Bish, uh, I don't. Yeah. Give me some hope. Give me some. Hope. Um, the the only thing I'll say is he, he did come up against a very strong. Um, Cleveland Browns defense. You know, Miles Garrett has had an unbelievable start to the season. Recorded three and a half sacks in this game, um, and in the lead, I think they got out. It got out of hand. You know, they were chasing the game quite a bit. So I think that's that's something to maybe match up dependent. You know, hopefully he can bounce back. But that's actually his lowest um, fantasy score since Week Five, two thousand and seventeen. So that's a stat by fantasy pros on that one. So that's you know that's it's going going back a fair few years there. Yeah. So it shows you how uh, you know how low that score was. Yeah, to be honest though, Bish, I don't think I think this is for the second week in a row he's been out snapped by to Ty J Spears. Uh, yeah, I'm nervous as an owner, very nervous as an owner. Like you said, there will be matchups throughout the uh, throughout the year that do benefit, and I'm sure he'll get 250, 200 yards. He, he does, and but um, I think. How, with how high you draft Derrick Henry, it should be what you call matchup proof. That it doesn't matter who you play. I know in previous years, get I think I've had him in my previous years. He's guaranteed 
minimum eight, ten points because he just rushes that many times. They don't really have much of an offense after they've uh, after they draft, uh, after they traded AJ Brown away, uh, and it's been all Derrick Henry. And to say he's only getting two, it's, it, it makes me nervous as out because I could have drafted many other players in his spot. And yeah, it's uh, yeah. I, I think with him as well, it's something to look at is how the team manage him. As we know, he's he's, he's one of those workhorses for for many years. He's, he's knocking on a bit, but. If you look at that division, they probably need him at the later end of the season. You know, we we thought Jaguars might run away with this division and they've stuttered. So I think it's all open at the minute and they're probably managing managing him a little bit, I think, to make sure that he makes it through to the end of the year. So, yeah, not ideal for fantasy owners. Um, no. Maybe maybe it's, a, I don't know, sit tight or maybe you can trade him for someone who you think's a bit of value, maybe... A Josh Jacobs or someone someone along those lines. I don't know. I think I think I'd struggle. I I own uh, I own both. Them. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd uh, I think I'd struggle. I, I don't know what let what what who would you trade if you were a Derrick Henry owner? Who would you trade for? Who would you be happy? Let's say I give you an offer. Who would you be happy giving away for Derrick Henry? Bitch. It would have to be someone in a similar position that wasn't performing at the minute. Uh, off the top of my head, I can only f- think of possibly Josh Jacobs in there, um, in that calibre. Unless you, unless someone's looking at maybe two players for one, and you're looking at a sort of a running back two value, picking up a winning a wide receiver two as well. So yeah, it's yeah, it's a tough one. I think maybe t- maybe is it time to t- is it too early to take a gamble? Do you need some wins? Someone like Zach Moss, who's been on fire, um, you know, s- someone like that who's guaranteed. Again, another workhorse running back who's who's guaranteed the backfield. So yeah, it's a it's a tough one for Derek Henry owners. I think to be honest, you, I think this early you've got to sit tight, haven't you? So and uh, oh, hopefully yeah. ride it out. Yeah, this who's your. Uh, so I, I'm I'm in the running back department as well, and I'm I'm looking at Joshua Kelly here from the from the Chargers. Uh, we knew this would be a points fest. We we knew it'd be a lot of throwing, um, but Joshua Kelly's come in there and. He's, he's pulled up. He's he's he's, uh, he's delivered twelve yards off eleven carries, um, and one one reception for five yards. Um, obviously filling the boots of Austin Eckler, who's a, a points machine. Um, he's just not delivered, and uh, you know those who probably picked him up on waivers, thinking they could stick him in there um, as a plug and play and, and pick up some points. Um, yeah, they've they've had a nightmare this week with him. So, um, oh, I'm. Many are, are hoping that Echo is back soon, I guess. Yeah. Um, I, to be honest, I've been... When I first started my fantasy football year, I think it was 2019, he was the, he was the backup for Echo. He's been the backup for Echo a couple of years and he got in and he got a run of two games and he didn't look good then. He, I know he, he, he was known for fumbling back then. He dropped a load of balls and throughout the years he's been getting better and then, yeah, watched him a lot. Watched him a lot yesterday. Well, I didn't watch him a lot, but when he did pop up, he wasn't good. He wasn't good at all. <laughs> and yeah, and like you said, Joshua Kelly, someone who, who was getting pretty much every snap as the running back in that offense. And that is not, it's, yeah, does not look good at all. Eckler, Eckler fans will be rejoicing that Eckler's workload once he comes back isn't going to get diminished at all by a Josh Kelly comeback because it's not happening. And, uh, yeah, I think I think there'll be a lot of panic going on in the in the Chargers uh, running back room right now because if, if Eckler's not back quickly, they might have to look elsewhere, Bish. Yeah, well, I think that they have an early buy the Chargers, so I think there's you know I've seen some reports where he's, he's going to be the sort of building Eckler back to be back after the buy, which is uh, his buy is week five, so back week six. So obviously that's still another three fantasy weeks away. So yeah, there's um. If if you are an Eckler owner, you know that's you're hoping he's going to be back sooner than that, I guess, because otherwise, you know, again, you've got another first second round pick on your team who's uh, not contributing. Yeah, and uh, my next fantasy flop, bitch. I've gone another player that I uh, have some value in in my fantasy teams, Darren Waller. I was really high on Darren Waller pre-season. I was excited. I thought, yeah, all the reports were that he were looking unbelievable and it's it's not happened and this is not a flop for this week this is a flop for it's all season so far um 
bit harsh for me, to be fair. Now, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think yeah, it's not happening. He got three point five fantasy points. Uh, it's just not happening, bitch, is it? Daniel Jones doesn't look like the quarterback that like, got paid all them millions. Um, like you said, Joshua Dubs. There's loads of quarterbacks on a lot less money than Daniel Jones, and he he just doesn't look don't look that good out there, bitch. And I know. In previous years, I've never been that high on him, but he had an OK year last year. And please give us some insight on, is there hope for Darren Waller? Well, you'd, you'd like to think so, because he is the biggest, now that Barkley's out there, he's the biggest uh, target there is, you know, the, the most um, mismatch there is on the field. And I don't know, is it the O-line? Obviously, they're massively overachieved last year, um, and we're seeing a bit of regression now. But yeah, it's um, it's tough times at the minute for him. Um, Waller, it's it's generally fitness. Can he be on the field? He's been on the field and he's just been, yeah, just just not not contributing. Whether that's him or or Jones, we're not sure. But you know, again, for those owners of him, they're going to need some some improvements pretty fast, really. Yeah, he's a uh, yeah. It, it's it's sad. It's sad. Daniel Jones isn't the quarterback. I'll say it now. This is a tough opinion. I don't think he's that quarterback. I don't think he deserved all that money. And uh, but because he has got the big contract, it means he's not leaving anytime soon. And uh, yeah, this this it might be a season long. I just don't see that upside there, especially when Saquon comes back because. He's been off for a game or so now, and it's it's not happening, is it? It's just not happening. The offense isn't flowing, so I think they're just going to look to Saquon more and more, and that could that could be a might open things up for Darren Waller. It could just keep him at his uh, low fantasy, low usage already. So uh, yeah, again, nervous, nervous Darren Waller owners out there, and I don't again, I don't know where you go. I don't know if he's got any trade value, Bish. Um, I don't think so. Again, yeah. who's, who's going to take him on? I, I would say, though, that there is some sort of streamers you can get out there, tight ends that you could pick up and potentially plug in, you know, as uh, on the waiver wire. I know I've spoke up Hunter Henry in leagues before. He had a, a down week this week, but he's, he's been pretty good the first two weeks. Um, so there's, I think I think if you look through your waiver wire, they'll, they'll be pick, you'll be able to pick some up. Weak dependent who's got who got a decent matchup again with with most of them it's a dart throw really but you know you're just looking for that upside if they can jag a touchdown that's all you need really so yeah that's a tough one and uh, my second one it's uh, it's a bit different I'm uh, I'm actually going with a head coach on this one I'm I'm going with Josh McDaniels here um, and I'll sort of uh, set the scene so it's they're down by eight points um, two minutes to go in the game on the I'm looking at my notes now. <laughs> I'm not excited. I've lost where I am. Uh, but yeah, red uh, on the sorry on the eight points down. We under two minutes to go, and on the on the eight yard line, um, so the eight meters away from scoring, and it's fourth and four. So obviously, if they kick the if they score a touchdown, that's six points. They get the two point um, attempt, whether they get that or not. You know, if they get it, they tie the game. They still need a field goal to win. If they don't get it, they still need a field goal to win anyway. So they, they've they chose to kick a field goal here, being eight points down. So that means they have to get the ball back and then they still have to score a touchdown, whether that's from 98 metres or, you know, it's but it's going to be a lot further than the eight yards that they are now. So for me there, I think he's absolutely killed Devontae Adams, who had a monster game, you know, two touchdowns, um, 130 plus. Um, Jacoby Myers had 85 yards. Josh Jacobs, you know, it's it's fourth and four, but you know, he, he had some receptions in the game. So for me, I think he's 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 robbed someone of um I'm gonna say a, a, at least six points for a touchdown there. Um in a sort of in a weird situation where it just doesn't make sense if you're trying to win the game to to kick a field goal instead of uh, trying to get the touchdown. I d I, I don't know, Joe. Am, am I looking at it wrong? I'm not I'm not sure. But I believe it, he did. He quote something like he, he he had to he had to do the uh, three point. He, he did some crazy thing like he, it's like he didn't know the uh, two point conversion. It's like he, it's like he didn't know that was a thing. It's like he had a brain brain fart and he forgot the two point conversions. A thing you can do. And in the NFL, it's 
it's not too uncommon to see them now. I know there was quite a few attempts even at the weekend of two-point conversions. Some come off, some don't. But it was crazy that he said he had to do the field goal. It made no sense. And when you've got when you've got such a target like Devontae Adams there and Josh Jacobs as a running back, you, you surely have confidence in doing a two-point conversion when you've got two of the hottest, uh, like I said, the running back where they'll be panicking about him rushing through, and then you've got a you've got a target like Adams, which his his catches are phenomenal, and as long as you throw him, as long as you get it in that direction, yeah, crazy bitch, no no hope. Um, I think in future you're nervous for the Raiders, I, I believe, a bit harsh on. Uh, but I, I don't. I think you, you've got to be nervous as the season goes on. That their upsides are just going to be capped by some crazy coaching decisions. I guess yeah. there's no. I don't think there's any other way to put it. I'm I'm going to throw one out there. Here. I think Devontae Adams gets traded. I think I think a team will come in for him. A team with with Super Bowl aspirations because I just don't see it at the Raiders. I just yeah. don't. You know he's. The only thing against him is his age. Obviously, he's. I think he's at least thirty now. You know, he's he's uh, and there's, there's sort of a bit of a a, a wide receiver cliff at thirty plus. You, you sort of see a dip, but I just I don't understand the. For me, there the coach just has no confidence in the in the offense. I no. just I just don't get it. Um, so yeah, it, it was a weird one for me. Yeah, I, yeah, no other way to put it, bitch. Watch it, crazy decision, and yeah, I think you've summed it well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a bit more positive, Bish's breakouts. Bish, start us off. Who was your breakout player of the week? My, this is a tough one. Obviously, what Miami have done is is unreal. So, I'm, yeah, I've actually got three three names here. Um, and again, because it's my section, I'm going to bend the rules. You know, <laughs> the rules are there to be bent. So yeah. I'm going to I'm going to give it to the the Dolphins' backfield. You know, the Raheem Mostert is the starter, um, coming in with 142 total yards, four touchdowns, and then just when you think he's gone out the game and, and we'll have a rest, I tell you what, we'll bring in the rookie, <laughs> Devon A. Chain, and he'll go for 203 rushing yards. Uh, 30 receiving yards and he'll score four touchdowns as well <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just unbelievable I, I saw I saw a photo um, after the game and there's uh, it, I love it there's there's six Broncos defenders on the floor and there's just a chain running off in the distance um, so yeah it's I think it's it's a joint effort for me you know that that Miami attack is just um, unreal at the minute um, just absolute speed all over the field and they did all that without Jalen Waddle as well who was out with concussion so yeah, um, the uh, the running back uh, tandem of of A Chain and and Moster to my stars of the week. I like it, Bish. Um, I think for fans to see again, this might come up later, so I'll not get too deep. But I think it makes Devon A Chain in bad in sorry in good matchups for Miami where the de- where they're playing bad defenses. I think that makes him a flex. I think that makes him a confident flex start, Bish, on how fast he looked, how powerful he, he had everything. Um, so yeah, I think fancy owners, it will come up in a minute. But yeah, get him on your team, and you can confidently start him if they play one of the bad defenses in the league. And obviously, most it just gives you even more confidence. He, he got slaughtered a bit, bitch, didn't he? Preseason, uh, they didn't they didn't realise why they're not trading for someone like Jonathan Taylor, and yeah, showing them why he got that elite speed. The whole offense is just absolute carnage in speed wise, and they can't. No one can stop him. No and just just um, going back to our punt league, I've had an absolute shocker. I've actually traded away Mostert. I traded away Mostert to Isaac uh, for uh, for Craig, uh, Chris Godwin. And but, but reason being is like you said, I just with Mostert, he's had a few injury riddled years, um, and I just wasn't sure whether it'd last. So uh, yeah, it's uh, but if it, if it can last, he is a home run hitter as we've seen. He's got unbelievable speed. And now they've got a backup um, ready to go with the same amount of speed and power as well. So it's very frightening for that back for teams facing that backfield at the minute. Yeah, amazing. Um, yeah, my one base again uh, on the backfields. I've got Zach Moss, but this is a one-man backfield. Zach Moss looks unbelievable. 122 yards and a receiving touchdown. Uh, obviously replacing Jonathan Taylor at the Colts. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen. With uh, JT, but uh, I, they'll they'll be missing him, but not as much now that uh, Zach Moss has exploded as good as he has, Bish. 
think in previous years at the Bills, he never quite got that role solidified, did he, behind Devin Singletary, but well, he's doing his best to keep her, keep his career going in the NFL by having such an outstanding week. I, I don't really know what to say about this because he's getting every snap. Uh, I think I think obviously this was the Jonathan Taylor role. I don't think they planned for a backup in Indianapolis. I think they were happy with JT taking all the offense, and obviously him now not playing. They had to get someone in there, and Zach Moss has just uh, rock and rolled and dominated that backfield. And he's again reiterate he's taking every snap. He still will be available on a couple of waiver wires, so just check. Probably won't, but. There'll be a couple of uh, leagues that haven't picked him up yet because of his, uh, obviously, his last few years at Buffalo and obviously Jonathan Taylor possibly coming back. So have a look if he's not there. Uh, if he's sorry, if he is there in the waiver wire, go pick him up or trade for him or because he'll have value for at least the next three or four weeks until Jonathan Taylor sorts himself out. But this, I don't even know if he's, I don't know if JT's even coming back this year. I don't think he is not to not to the Colts anyway. Um, I think it's it's Moss's backfield, and he's even catching passes now as well. You know, he scored a nice touchdown, unbelievable, pretty good catch on on the contested catch on the sideline as well. So he is he is the the, uh, the running back in 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 Indianapolis. So yeah, uh, definitely one to to get hold of. And is I think he's even match up proof to be honest. You know, I had him, I've got him in one league, and I didn't start him because of that Ravens defense, and you know he absolutely blew them to bits. So. I think he is matchup proof just just because of the volume he's getting, and it just shows I think as well how good that that offensive line is that they have uh, over there in in Indy. So yeah, definitely one to if you can get him, definitely try and grab him. Yeah. Fish, who's your son? My, yeah. So my uh, runner up is uh, is Keenan Allen. You know we spoke earlier in the show, um, Mike Williams going down, but Keenan Allen, he, he is one I do I do like him. I've liked him for years. Just. Uh, how good he is, you know. Again, another wide receiver who struggled with injuries, but at the minute he's unbelievable. Eighteen receptions, two hundred and fifteen receiving yards, and he's even throwing touchdowns now. He threw a passing touchdown to Mike Williams for forty-nine yards as well. So, you know, Justin Herbert, if you need a breather, it's all right. You've got Keenan <laughs> Allen there. So, yeah, he's, and and he's he's going to need to be um, like this for the next few weeks. I think, as I said, Mike Williams is out. The the Chargers defense, I'm not sure what's going on there. You know, the the if you look at the names on that defense, you know, your Bosa's, your Max, your your Derwin James, JC Jacksons, and they're just it's like Minnesota last year we spoke about. They're just like they're just they're just a sieve. There's holes everywhere. So yeah. the offense is going to need to keep that scoreboard scoreboard ticking. And uh, I think Keenan Allen's your man for that. Yeah, and like I say, especially with Mike Williams possibly gone for the season. We've gone over it earlier. Keenan Allen, that just shoots him through the roof. So yeah, Keenan Allen owners, well done. And I think this, uh, I think the success might carry on all season long. Injury aside, base touch wood. I'm, I'm on a nice little wood table and touching it. <laughs> nice. Everything good for Keenan Allen. <laughs> My second one is someone who um, got slaughtered in the preseason. I think I watched some other podcasts of people who like watching the podcast. He, he'd been taking the piss out of as an old man. They can't move very quickly. He looks rubbish last year on the, on the Minnesota Vikings. He's now changed team and he looks fantastic. It's Adam Phelan. He got 11. <laughs> I really built that up, didn't I? Um, <laughs> 11, 11 catches for 145 yards and a touchdown, bitch. Um he looks good. He looks he looks like he's fighting for his place in the league. He looks like he wants to shut the naysayers up. Uh, and yeah, I'm I'm I think he, Adam Feeling owners, if there is any that are rostering him, you're looking good and you're feeling happy, bitch. I don't know what uh, you've got to say, but I think I think the big one is here. It was uh, the quarterback. Obviously, they've drafted Bryce Young. He was out, and he's supposed to be out for next week as well. So it was uh, the wily veteran. Andy Dalton, who was a uh, quarterback in, and uh, yeah, a, uh, a, a quarterback who's, who's been around, got that experience, and another wide receiver, again, who's been around and got that experience, and yeah, it, it seemed to work well. Um, I was praying that he didn't find him for a touchdown, because I was up against him in, in a league, and that garbage time touchdown and yards has, has uh, finished me off in one matchup, but yeah, it's um, it seems to be definitely 
uh, the target for, for for Andy Dalton. Um, and, and it's a weird situation there with, with Bryce Young. I think he rolled his ankle, so he looks he looks quite lightweight. So, and Andy Dalton's been coming in and taking snaps in certain games as well. So, yeah, I think as long as Andy Dalton's there, I think he'll be he'll be finding feeling. Yeah, brilliant. Best take through your fourth. Uh, well, you well, it's technically yeah, it's technically your fourth base, isn't it? Oh no, your third. Your yeah. third. My counting skills are phenomenal. Oh no, that that were it because I, I put two into one, didn't I? I put the two running backs oh, into yeah. So right. yeah, all I good. Thought... Yeah. Oh, the next one, Bish. The waiver wire pickups. Um, as I said, this is a this is one that I've been having a look at. But uh, joining on from what we said earlier about the Mike Williams injury, I think this shoots Joshua Palmer up uh, the leagues completely. He um he's looked good. He did well last year in targets when both wide receivers were injured, uh, and I think this he, he's going to be the replacement for Mike Williams. And uh, yeah, he's only rostered in zero point seven percent of leagues. That's on that's in ESPN leagues. So get yourself uh, Joshua Palmer on that waiver wire. I believe he's available in ours as well, Bishy. He? he is. Yeah, I'm just looking now. Yeah. He is. A lot of fat. I reckon there'll be a lot of fab, as it's called, uh, the money spent on getting Joshua Palmer in that league. So I, I think he's a safe flex bet, Bish, but I don't know what you think. I'm, I'm... Yeah, I agree. As we said, you know, they're going, they need to throw to score points. So they've got Keenan Allen. Um, Eckler's obviously missing at the minute. Williams is gone for the season. They need they need other options there. So it's Everett can eat up his game as being a tight end. But it's jo- I think it's Josh Palmer. You know, he he, he come in, he had 66 receiving yards and for a touchdown as well. So um, I think he's going to be involved. Um, so yeah, I think that that's a good pickup. Um, I think there's a few this week to be fair. So to narrow it down, you know, we, we, we could be here a while going through them, but you know, <laughs> we narrow it down to two each and I'm gonna. I'm on the wide receiver um, train as well. I'm. I'm actually going with the Houston Texans wide receiver Tank Dell, who's also available in our league. Um, and uh, you know, I, I spoke in previous about Nico Collins being um, Stroud's sort of favorite wide receiver. Well, in the last two weeks, Tank Dell has just totally <laughs> made, me look, made me look stupid, to be honest. So, <laughs> in the last two weeks, he's had 17 targets. Um, 10, 10 last week, seven this week. And this week he went off for 145 receiving yards. So you know he's. I thought it'd be Nico Collins, but it looks like it's Tank Dell. Um, you know, and against a t- in a Texans team that we thought might be trailing often in games, um, I think he's is a great pickup if he's out there. Uh, I def, def I definitely go get him um, if he's available. What right. would, What do you think, Joe? Would Would you be leaning if you had to? Who are you spending more fab on? Tank Dell or Josh Palmer? I'm 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 going with Josh Palmer, to be yeah. honest. I think um Mike Williams not being there for a whole season means he's guaranteed for a full year. Uh, Nico Collins is gonna get action and I think he's more the touchdown threat, obviously. Tank Dell got a touchdown, but I think Nico Collins is that big body who they'll look for in the red zone. I think it fits game script. Tank Dell is the explosive wide receiver who they're looking deep because they need them points quickly. Might might continue throughout the year, but I think uh, I think you've got that guarantee in Josh Palmer. I think Tank, Tank Dell's going to keep on having the big weeks every so often, but I think Josh Palmer as a flex or wide receiver too is going to be a safe bet throughout the year from this point onwards. So uh, yeah, if you need if you need the upside, Tank Delbish. But if you if you need, let's say you're a Mike Williams owner, you need that replacement in there. I'm going. I'm safely going. Josh Palmer's going to get me the points required to have a good run at this year's uh, fantasy league. Nice. That's why you sat top of the league, eh, Joe? <laughs> I'm coming. I'm flying. <laughs> um, yeah, my my second uh, waiver wire pickup would be Devon A. Chain. Um, this is for the opposite reason as Joshua Palmer, more on the tank Dell. His upside on games where, like I said, the def- I said it earlier, where the defense isn't going to be that strong. Uh, it, it's just ginormous. Two hundred, like you said, two. two 
two rushing touchdowns, two receiving touchdowns. He's a great receiving running back, which I don't think Miami, I don't think Mostert's really known for his receiving. So he, he he's got that guaranteed in the rec- in the receiving work. Jeff Wilson's not an amazing receiver either. Uh, I think the boat and if he does, is Josh Wilson coming back this year? Is he out for the year? I'm not sure. I think he. Did they put him on season ending? I am not sure. I'll have to. I'll uh, I'll look into that now as as you're going on. Yeah, I'll go. Yeah. So if uh, if Jeff Jeff Wilson isn't coming back for a while, Devon A. Chains he, he might even turn into a safe bet because he's getting that receiving work, and we know obviously in PPR leagues, which has his half PPR bish, or is it a full PPR? Yeah, it's half PPR. Half PPR. It's still it's still very good. Full PPR, it's it's amazing. Um, so I think, yeah, you need to you need to pick up Devon A. Chain. Uh, I think he's shown this week that he's, the talents there is a rookie, so that means his workload will more than likely go up, up and up and up. And that receiving work uh, with two attacking by lower under under centre is just going to be fantastic. And I think he just looks good. Basically, he passes. I go a lot off the eye test. I love my stats, but I'm an eye test man, and he passes every test I've I've seen. Watching him, he just looks phenomenal, and he's got he's got a bit more strength about him than Mustard. Mustard's just a, a speed demon. Probably a better way of describing it, but he's just speed, speed, speed. H N's got that speed, but he's got the power with it, and he can catch a ball like not many other running backs uh, can. Uh, so I'm I'm all over Devon H N, and he's already uh, picked up. I've already, like I said earlier, put him in my fab. I spent some fab on him, and I'm hoping I'll uh, I'll get Devon. Yeah, he's, I, I agree with that. He's, he's uh, one of the backs that I, I liked um, coming out of college and, and what he did in the combine. Just looking at Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson's available from week five. So you're only on a uh, short pup. Um, and I'm, while you were talking, I was just checking the league uh, league fab and seeing how much you had available. Obviously, you're looking at Palmer, you're looking at A-Chain this week, but you've not spent any yet. So you, you're at 100. So you've got plenty to, to throw out there. So it'll be interesting to see see what happens. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, bitch. I dived in there, but yeah, I said last week I struggled to get a, uh, I struggled to get really a waiver wire. I didn't really know none of them screamed out to me. Well, these two, Joshua Palmer and Devon Adrian, are screaming out to me, and I'm gonna spend. <laughs> oh, a big spender. There we go. <laughs> I like it, and I'm I'm doubling on my second one. I'm doubling up with the Texans here. That you know, and it's a it's a team. Sorry, quarterback CJ Stroud. Um, you know, a lot of people play one quarterback league, so the quarterback, you know, there's, there's a lot to choose from. But I think he's, I think he's a good, possibly streamer option, de- um, sort of matchup dependent. Um, a bit about him, he, he, he was, he looked like he was going number one overall in the draft, and then he had sort of, I think he didn't do very well in an IQ test that they generally use, and that dropped his, um, Dropped his draft stock a little bit, so he, he uh, Bryce Young actually went one overall rather than rather than he did. Um, but I've liked him. He's come in and he's looked really good. Um, the last two weeks, he's gone for two hundred and eighty yards, um, and then the week just gone um, where they absolutely put did a number on the Jaguars. He's gone. He's thrown for three hundred and eighty four yards, two touchdowns in both games, um, and, and in our league, half PPR. Um, he's 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 scored two games over 20 points there so that that's a it's a very good score um over 20 points so i think he's one sort of if you've if you've not got one of the one of the elite top dogs you know he's definitely one where you could probably bring into your bench and sort of rotate with your with your starter depending on matchups really so yeah i've been impressed with him but what do you think joe to um to the texans and, and to cj stroud Shock, aren't they? Shock how good they've been, to be honest. I didn't have any, um, I didn't have much hope for them throughout the year, and they've, they're proving me wrong. They've, they've played some brilliant football. Uh, CJ Stroud, as you said, I, I think the way I can explain your one in it for is just, I, I disagree with me, but it, it wasn't even consideration for me. You know what I mean? Be one that would that far off even getting roasted or even looking as a streamer because I don't pick quarterbacks very high ever. So I do yeah. use streaming quarterback option he wasn't even a thought but he now he now is for me uh yeah and i might be i won't be picking him up this week probably because i've got other fab to spend but if he's available <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah. he's 
when I pick him up in, in a future week, I'll definitely be picking him up and I'll definitely be using him more confidently than I ever would before because he's gone from a no option to a, like you said, a pretty confident option when uh, the time comes, dependent on the matchup. So fair play, CJ Stroud, you're proving the IQ test is wrong. <laughs> yeah, and, and he's, to be fair, you know, I'm, I'm sat with Trevor Lawrence at the minute, who's, um, you know, they've been a bit of underperforming the. The Jaguar, so it's it's one I'm looking at with a bit of interest, to be honest. You know, next week is probably not the right week for me. He's got Pittsburgh, um, so that that might be uh, you know coming up against uh, TJ Watt and Co. That that might be a tough one for him, but it's one to to keep an eye on. Well, I, I'll certainly be keeping an eye on him, see how he goes, and uh, you know if those twenty plus games are, are racking up and uh, T Law's still underperforming, it might be uh, it might be a move that I make. Yeah, Bish, let, let's finish off the name. Of our show, our favourite segment, I believe, the punters. <laughs> it makes me laugh every time. It's such as, the punters, the best kicker of the week. Uh, I like to look forward, so I'm going simply Jason Stan, uh, Jason Sanders of the Miami Dolphins. And one reason, one reason only, is a safe bet. That offense is that powerful that you're going to get a guaranteed four, five, six extra point kicks anyway. Uh, I think you've got you you've got that floor. You talk floors and you talk ce- uh, ceilings. For a kicker to have a floor as high as Jason Sanders, I think you've got to pick him up. He's not only a streamer that you just pick week on week. I think you get him in for the rest of the year because he's confidently going to be five points in. Some kickers don't get any points. Some kickers get one point and you panic and they might miss. And whether he misses or not, he's getting he's, you're getting four or five points, and that's what you. For me, that's what I want from my kicker. I'm not looking for massive upside. I'm looking for some consistency from somewhere, which you rarely get. So get Jason Sanders in your team if he's available. Nice, I like it. And my kicker, what I'm looking for in a kicker, I'm looking for field goals out of my kicker. Oh, I'm nice. looking for, for the three points. I'm looking for for those. And uh, my pick this week is a record breaker. It's Matt, oh. it's Matt Gay from the Indiap- Indianapolis Colts. Um, he's the first kicker to kick four 50 push yard field goals in one game uh, in, and in this game one came in the last two minutes to tie the game and then the winner came in overtime to to give the, the Colts what is a, sh- a shock win um, you know against the Ravens so Matt Gay you are my kicker of the week long may it continue Brilliant, Matt. What a pick. What a record. Uh, <laughs> brilliant. Well, it's been a pleasure. Good luck uh, over the next uh, night so uh, wish you all the best in your game against Tag. Uh, I've been been getting stuck into tagging his team, so I'm hoping you win. I can keep. <laughs> yeah. uh, so good luck, Bish. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we need. I need those bragging rights. So we'll see how it goes. And Bish, look at my bank after this next few days because it will be gone because my stream will <laughs> get picked up. Been a pleasure, Bish. Finishes off. Yep. Um, like, subscribe. Check out um, everything we've got: Twitter, Instagram. Uh, YouTube, Spotify, TikTok, we're all over it. So fantasy content is coming. We'll be back um, later on in the week with, uh, I think, some some flex options uh, yep. that we want your opinion on. So, yeah, and, uh, also a possible live stream. So any questions, let's get them in. Um, let's let's get talking fantasy and uh, see if we can help you win some matchups and uh, win some trophies. Looking forward to it, Bish. Especially, like you said, picking them flex positions is so key. In uh, in fantasy, so yeah, any questions, get them in. Let's everyone, let all the pump viewers have a good week. See you soon. Signing off. <laughs>